Hi, um, what I have today for review is Hyundai i20 um, MHEV vehicle, um, which stands for mild, mild hybrid electric vehicle, which is one of the basic um, setups for when it moves to the to the hybrids itself. So here we go. Um, this is Hyundai i20. Um, it's the right weather for for this sort of setup, a um, bit red, a bit boring um, looking vehicle. Um, as you can see, how you can differentiate, see if it's a mild um, hybrid electric vehicle. Um, it's got 48 V on the side. Um, so the styling of this is, I will let you to decide, um, as it's a sort of grey, boring, rainy day, uh, but we will suit this vehicle uh, to drive somewhere to see the Grand. Um, that's how it looks. Um, let's start. Um, let me show you what's in a boot. It's just a basic setup, and um, then we can go for the spin. So let me get the boot open. Oh, here at the back, we have um, hybrid 48 volt battery, which is, uh, as you can see, uh, fitted uh, where the spare wheel um, normally would be. You still got your uh, electric pump and a uh, and a glue in a in, in a case of emergency if you've got a flat tire so that's the boot if we move into the front let's pop the bonnet the bonnet um release is quite easily locatable so we here here we are in engine bay you still got your conventional 12 volt battery um so that's that's that is the mhev part of the system uh, which actually um, starts a, an alternator system, which obviously still looks like an alternator, but obviously starts and stops the vehicle. It still has conventional starter motor here on the side, if you can see, uh, which only works, um, cranks the engine uh, when engine is cold. And when engine warms up, then the starter generator takes it over um, stops and cranks the engine also this vehicle is equipped with how the hyundai is calling intelligent manual gearbox uh, which but which technically is a manual gearbox it's a couple of sensors speed sensors um so it uh, and a gear selection sensor so they are uh, so the gearbox and ecu actually knows where in which location actually the gear lever is to start and stop um just to just to actually start and stop the vehicle because it goes in a sailing mode when you actually put in a brake uh, when you're applying actually the brakes and coasting so it go it actually turns off the engine so that's what sort of intelligent intelligent gearbox intelligent gearbox actually performs right so it knows and tries to give you the best economy um, out of the vehicle and we're gonna go for the road to see how it actually drives and performs and um, we'll let you decide whether something you would be planning to purchase or not um, in my opinion <laughs> if you don't want to be recognized you are on this earth or planet it's a car for you um, <laughs> that's my opinion um, so yeah it's a little one liter Smart stream engine um, with a turbo charger on it. Um, it's a three cylinder engine, also, just to know so how powerful it is. Um, it's quicker than your granny, definitely. So, all right, we'll go for the road test now. We are on this great setting around here in the Seven Oaks area, um, around Great. There's a lot of uh, around Kent, I mean. Um, there's a lot of greenery around, so you can um, actually um, enjoy it. I hope it's going to be a nice... Um, uh, I will take you through the nice narrow lanes um, in, in the middle of the Kent, middle of Norway, um, where you would want to take some rally car around. Um, not this little Hyundai i20, but uh, let's start with Hyundai i20 and see see how it actually performs and, uh, and uh, what 
actually MPG can actually deliver whether it makes sense to go for something like that or go actually for something bigger and um, and enjoy um, your livelihood um, or your everyday driving even to the some of the convenience stores you know so here is the interior of Hyundai i20 um, for i20 I would say it's quite sneak and nicely looking interior so the steering wheel is quite a nice size um, it's got a digital um, LCD display um, with all the sort of basic gadgets in it but we'll go through those gadgets on the road test all right let's take this little i20 for the road test so basically to start the car you have to turn the ignition on you have to press clutch all the way to the floor you have to press the brakes as well and make sure the gear uh, gearbox actually is in neutral otherwise you see it's not start it's telling you to put um, um put a gear lever in neutral so it's quite an unusual setup if you normally you would go in manual just put in the first gear i mean you put you press the clutch and you'll start a car uh, and you will start a car right on this one you can't you, you, some so on some other vehicles you have to press clutch to start a car you know but on this one you press the clutch and nothing happens you think oh what the heck you know somebody might call brake on assistance you know the car doesn't start uh when probably somebody would take a bit of too much of drinking some night you know and just when the memory disappears the car would not start because you haven't pressed the clutch and the brake and to make sure this is in the neutral right so let's go so you've got unnecessary vibration here what i wasn't expecting so i'm just this is my first review when i set up the camera so we'll see what's gonna come out of it um and uh we'll take from there so yeah we're back in i20 um as i explained it's a, it's, it's a boring day uh, it's rainy gray um and if if you don't want to be seen or recognized uh, it's a perfect car you know um a day where you wanna just take away your days from social media uh, it's a train you wanna go for the nice relaxing drive and you turn off your mobile phones and uh, and you're going to see your granny your mom or your granddad you know um, just a, in a little lonely drive um, as I'm doing um, as I, I'm doing this little trip right now through a little narrow country lanes where you have to be super careful but what makes this car quite sharp i mean the steering's quite i mean nice and enjoyable you know the steering wheel itself is, is quite it's, it has a nice size it could be, be slightly smaller so we have a car coming on front of us so we need to interchange this is welcome in our country lines this is how it happens and um thank you So these guys are it looks like they are on some influence of some sort of um, alcohols they've been going quite fast or, or some sort of other substances you know so we're just about to exchange um, directions so this is makes it quite hard all these hedges on a side you know and now the spring is sort of here everything starts um, coming out you know um, all the all them grasses bushes are starting to bring some stuff out but okay doesn't matter you're not interested in that but we just taking this little i20 through the country lanes and we have unnecessary um, unnecessary juddering noise so no juddering noise vibration so as we come into this little chicane we're gonna go right but we need to make sure there's no cars so 
Wild, here we go, the car's coming in front of us and um, we need to pull in and let that uh, go. So as you noticed, no it's not sailing, but let's go back. So we nearly had two crashes, uh, we have um, driven only like two, three minutes and um, this is the fun of narrow country lanes where you have to be super careful um, and I guess this is a perfect car. Um, regards to entertainment system you know um, it's this week only done 2000 miles and uh, I connected my iPhone um, with Wi-Fi projection so uh, regards to Android and Apple Play, so it keeps it keeps actually bouncing and um, keeps disconnecting. Uh, keep losing the Wi-Fi signal and projection. Um, I don't know why, but it's so annoying uh, when you're driving and um, you want a constant uh, just to see your map where you're actually going you know and, and and that is very annoying i guess it, there could be a simple solution with the software update to make the connection um more stable but that is one minus what annoys me a lot so now we're gonna go on 30 mile an hour road um an a road and um it's not an a road it's just a normal normal road which is 30 miles an hour um, we'll get an A road uh, later on so coming back to entertainment system um, that's one minus but regards to for this little car you know it, it, it's not a most uh, um, how to say it's not a most um, um, luxury car or most noticeable car in the world uh, which designs are quite I don't know um, basic and um, a bit dull you know um, this is probably it, it could actually probably win Unless the Hyundai made this car for actually winning the title of most boring car in the year, you know. But the only things which actually saves this car a bit when, once you're in this car is infotainment system. Right? You got you got a bit of that sort of bigger TV style feeling, you know, and the dashboard, and it's got a digital dashboard, and it looks like one of the um, engineers. Be they they have been actually um, in in, a, in when they were. Um, young as a child probably been playing those um, um, Formula One games you know the, the, the driving games where you had those displays um, on actually on on, 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 um, on a game in, in on on, um, on a screen you know the digital screens and you can see the uh, engine revs and uh, how fast you're going that's actually is on in this car that's actually saves this car for being very boring you know and um, rest of the uh, mild hybrid um, 48 battery pack in there you know um, all of those little um, little gadgets you can call them um, fuel saving devices you know um, makes that car that that boring um, that boring boring old school feeling of the vehicle kind of be of disappearing but you know still the technology is advancing really fast and um, 40 mile an hour road 50 miles an hour so we get in um, up to um, 50 so that's a speed limit here. So we're going 
up the hill. Um, regards to car's performance, you know, um, who would really buy this vehicle? I would say, like I mentioned before, somebody who don't wanna, who wants the simple life, simple lifestyle, you know, simple car. Um, regards to MPG. I average in normally something like 58, you know, um, 52, you know, it could be better, but, um, but probably you would find this out, you, you'll find out more, it would more beneficial using this um, mild hybrid in city. You know, and all these stop and starts, and uh, um, where you actually sort of coasting, you know, then then the smart um, intelligent gearbox will actually there's a, another clutch actuator which will simply press the clutch and and um, switch off the engine, and you will be sailing sort of coasting. Um, engine would be off, um, and it would save. Um, the uh, fuel you know how efficient it is mm. so one liter if you if you average in like 50 initially when I took this week it was like 68 and I was thinking wow that's that's quite good but once I've been once I once I start using this vehicle around motorways the MPG just drops significantly you know so I would assume you will find all these benefits like on all the hybrids whether it's a mild hybrid um, or, or, or extended range hybrid or plug-in hybrid you know you will benefit this in a in an urban in a city driving you know and um, that will give you some sort of um, advantage in fuel efficiency but once you will start taking the vehicle out back on a motorway that's where it comes to the normal conventional engine and the fuel savings are not great um, uh, like I said, I experienced on this one liter um, engine. Um, it is one liter GDI engine um, with direct injection, uh, three cylinders, like I mentioned, uh, and a turbo powered as well. Um, which is that what you will get, you know? But when you're coming back to like a diesel car. And back to what I drive every day is Hyundai Tucson Automatic 1.6 CRDI, 136 horsepower. You know, then comparing um, that to this, pretty much I experience the same same miles per gallon. You know, um, nothing more, nothing less um, in these same uh, weather temperatures. What we have outside now, I think, is what 11. You know, so that is if you want something better, more dynamic, more powerful, um, probably go still for the Euro 6 diesel. You'll still be you'll still be alright with Euro 6 diesel for a few years, you know, until the government will change something, you know. But um, that's what I would do, you know, um, and uh, we'll still. And still I can choose diesel, I will still go for diesel, you still got more better driving, you got more torque, um, you have more power, you know. Uh, and uh, yes, this one litre engine compared to like one litre EcoBoost on Ford Fiesta, um, it's more dynamic, it has less audible no noises from engine itself. So technically you don't feel like you have a three cylinder um, layout engine uh, than on a one litre echo boost because it's, that particular engine is quite noisy you know and you can and you can feel um, it, it has like lack of one bank one cylinder right but this one is quite balanced out nicely by Hyundai you know that's what I can say um, it doesn't sound like it runs on a free cylinder it doesn't sound like you've got motorbike engine in there right but um, yeah and regards to fuel efficiency I can't see 
and feel any huge savings on this vehicle, you know. Um, even they add in all these um, technologies, you know, coasting, sailing, um, um, start and stop system, uh, start the generator. When actually on a braking, you can feel regenerative braking um, kicks in. It sort of slows down. So what it does, it it, it, it makes the start the generator spin our direction, you know, and recharges that 48 volt battery, which is located in the boot. And um, you can also select um, through the menu um, to see the power distribution on a car. You can have a look what happens when you're releasing um, accelerator and actually braking. You can see that um, what it does to the power distribution, you know, um, um, sort of shows you in intelligently what happens, you know, and um, probably more looks cool for the kids, you know, when they see that. Oh wow. <laughs> So yeah, let me, just something is not right with my phone setup, you know. Like I said, as I'm doing this first time, um, I need to buy suction pads and, you know, you learn from your mistakes, from your failures, you know. But I will need another suction pad and um, fit that nicely. Um, but we need another, another two cameras for the front and the back of the vehicle. And, um, to jiggle about so I can do a good setup, you know. Um, but yeah, so this is a little review on i20. What I think it's quite a boring vehicle, you know. Uh, I haven't finished who can actually buy who would buy this car, you know. Um, probably older couple, older couple, or probably would be if you're uh, a de delivery guy, right? Uh, Uber Eats. Um, if you don't have a motorbike in certain areas, then um, this could be a little run-around car. Now Hyundai probably does i20, um, that would even suit better. But with this one, it's, it's, it's still okay, you know, on a motorway when you, it's actually it's got a drive modes. Wow! You can select it in a, um, in a comfort, um, sport and echo mode, you know, and it changes the the display coloring, you know, display style, you know. Um, when you put a sport, if it looks like you change everything red, like you have like with a Hyundai um, R version, you know, under the bonnet, you know. But technically, no, it's just you have like three styles, three colorings. So you can choose what how it suits you, you know. Comfort is a silver, um, the red. Technically, do I like it? I think the echo styling it, it looks much much better than um, the comfort and the red sports red sport. I, I just don't like particularly the layout. Um, the way it is um, feels a bit too aggressive, um, you know, um, with your eyesight. That's just the impression of how I feel how it feels. Um, yeah, it feels like something is missing, you know. Um, but yeah, the echo mode styling with a very, very light blue, uh, which is sort of looks like Hyundai default theme, um, is is quite um, is quite good, you know. I mean, to for the long driving, you know, it doesn't it don't it doesn't feel intimidated. And um, yeah. With this one, you still got conventional key, manual intelligent gearbox, which you don't really notice in. Um, and then still got manual handbrake. And um, still got manual handbrake. What else you got? One USB charger. One just normal charger and one normal 12 volt cigarette lighter type charger, and um, and that's pretty much it. You you have um, um, normal 
standard heat heating system without any climate control. You've got air conditioning. Um, it's got a radio. It doesn't have a sat. Now this is quite annoying. Only one annoying thing. Why I hate um, as the Android. I mean the Apple Play plays up. Uh, is losing connectivity, right? There's nowhere to nicely put a phone. You know where you can see your just normal Google Maps or so the stupid um, um, intervention, you know, and which is so annoying. I find it really annoying, and um, it actually doesn't connect uh, with um, Apple Play with the with the lead. Um, it connects with um, through the Wi-Fi. You know, it projects the screen through the Wi-Fi, and um, which is good, you know, but it's annoying. Because it doesn't work properly, you know, like I mentioned that before. Um, and it would be nice to have original sat nav in there because I found it better. Because I quite like actually Hyundai sat nav, um, which is in my Hyundai Y drive everyday basis. Um, it's quite decent, easy to set up, easy to navigate um, compared to other vehicle sat navs. Um, Audi has a decent one, <coughs> uh, BMW as well, um, but they, I'm talking about a newer style sat now, so where you, you you started to notice the cars started to use that some um, around about 2018 times, you know, so they they didn't use those dull sat now, so where it takes like forever to set the location up and um, and then and, and then actually drive somewhere. You know, and um, which is can be really frustrating, you know. And um, but these ones obviously are much better. You can quicker put a location in, and you drive. This is this is what I'm actually missing. I don't know why they didn't put it in. And this in this spec, you know, um, would be good to have it. But um, it's Hyundai for you, you know. So. Yeah, no leather seats. Um, how comfortable the seats are? I would, I would say, they're not very comfortable because the backrest you can only tilt it backwards and forwards. So you can't adjust really the back itself. And for the long drives, I found I found it um, my back hurts, you know, for the from the long drives. So we took it around through the um, little residential area the vehicle uh, as you can see there's no one around and no one would even notice we actually drive in because it's sort of red it looks like a bloody autumn leaf it just blends in with the environment no one no one will actually see you actually there you know um, so that is um, Hyundai i20 for you um, um, once you get once you will, you will notice once you first time will get into this vehicle um, you, you find it a bit strange because you're just overwhelmed with the digital display um, of the instrument cluster and the radio and then it doesn't start and once you come from automatic to this it, it feels very it took me like half an hour to get used to it you know um, and um, but then once you get used to it it's it's, it's okay um, only minus to, another minus to this car what I don't like is got obviously lane control as well and when I always keep the lane control always on right and uh, when you drive his lane control on this I believe those sensors they might recalibrate something and put in your software update but I mean it's very delayed once once you start rolling to the lane and um, it's got left once it starts rolling to the uh, to the left to the to the to the white lane marking, right? It, it's quite late and it sharply moves the car back to the right. So it, it, it's it's not like the, the lane control is not smooth, smoothly operational. You know, it's kind of a bit intimidating. And when it does, they sort of pulls and it feels like you. You're doing something in a car, you know, like I don't know, texting. 
you know that's how it moves the vehicle instead of keeping you in a lane like like I have um, like I have this in my Hyundai where lane control lane assist I mean the lane assist um, keeps you nicely and smoothly in in the lane you know it doesn't so the um, it feels like car is too small you know and those sensors are quite wide apart um, I think again it's some sort of um, calibration uh, and setup but I don't I don't like it um, the, the lane control um, the lane assist on this vehicle you know and um, And, and, and it's not it doesn't operate smoothly which is annoying you know and um, which like I said it's a bit erratic operation um, that guy you know he's already been he didn't see us uh, initially and he said I was crossing the road and now he's uh, as, uh, as well <laughs> walking around <laughs> And keeps um, um, and it keeps uh, um, passing us. Uh, I think he's going for uh, evening walk. So that is that is the little trip of the Hyundai i20. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you like it, click and um, subscribe to YouTube channel. This is my was my test. See how, what I can actually do. Um, with um, this little review video and um, we'll see how it will work out but um, I just wanted to do a test so if you if you like click and subscribe um, share um, and um, if you want to see some other cars I will I will try to do something else um, something more funnier uh, instead of instead of the instead of the We'll not try to do things like boring way, you know. So yeah, Hyundai, what do you think about i20? Leave your comment. What do you think about i20? You know, um, would you buy it or not? See you next time.